terms of uh, the development within ZEC. I respectively disagree with some of the things that she's saying. She's obviously not correct uh, on points of law. She's obviously not correct on points of uh, the administrative requirements that are imposed on the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission. In fact, I must hasten to say to all the commissioners, and in particular to the chairperson of the commission, Justice Shigumba, remember to respect your oath. Your oath to the people of Zimbabwe, your oath to the country of Zimbabwe, and your oath, more importantly, uh, to the law. Uh, because she, she took an oath, and the meaning of an oath is that she's supposed to respect that oath to the letter and spirit. Uh, and of course, uh, she knows what I mean by saying, honor your oath, respect your oath. We have disagreed with uh, Zek on a number of issues. As you are aware, we had a press conference and highlighted the issues that we are not in agreement with, uh, particularly uh, issues around the ballot paper and the issue of the voters' law. Now, what has become so clear and so apparent is the fact that by Zek's own admission, they have said that the Zek, the Zek saver was cloned. They don't know who cloned it. But what is clear is that they have admitted from what Chigumba said, from her own mouth, in her own way, the Zek server was cloned. And that's the explanation for the numbers that have been dished out and for the numbers that have been sent out. But what is clear is that uh, if the Zek website or server has been cloned, all the other political parties are complaining except ZANU-PF. Yet ZANU-PF again is the culprit that has been found with those numbers being sent to individuals coming from ZEC, there is a clear violation and breach by ZANU-PF, by ZEC, in terms of uh, confidentiality and privacy of voter information. We can no longer, therefore, under those circumstances, trust ZEC that there's not going to be any further cloning or any further interference with the server of ZEC. And that is a problem. And we want it to be taken seriously. It actually states the reason why we have said that we are losing confidence in ZEC, in its capacity to be an honest umpire and an objective independent referee. Number two, again by ZEC chairperson's admission, she has admitted that uh, they did not feel that the postal ballot was done in a manner that does not go beyond what is expected in terms of the law. In fact, she admitted that uh, there is evidence of electoral malpractice, especially if one has regard to the fact that our officers were asked to vote in the presence of their seniors. That vote was not secret. We have this information. Officers are phoning us. They are complaining, we have raised these issues, and this has continued. So we would want this ballot to be made invalid, nullified, so that it is done according to the law, in full secrecy, respecting our police officers. And also not forcing police officers to be on a personal ballot when they have not applied for it. We know that they are doing it, and we want this to be sorted out. So it's clear that the postal ballot was not done according to the law, and it therefore compromised and has to be invalidated. You know, we are taking steps uh, in terms of the law. We are also taking steps in terms of uh, uh, our administrative arrangements to make sure that this issue is dealt with. The third issue is the issue on the ballot printing. It is very clear that the ballot printing was not done in accordance with the law. In terms of the law, the Electoral Act, Section 57, uh, it's very clear that it has to be done uh, particularly the layout of uh, the ballot paper itself it has to be done according to the alphabetical order. And if you have regard to what is called the V10, it's clear that that was not followed. I don't know what uh, Commissioner Chikumba's defense is in a clear and vi a flag a flagrant violation of that uh, provision of law where Mr. Mnangagwa is now finding himself being the first on the alphabet by virtue of what they are calling another caller when in fact it's supposed to be uh, done in an alphabetical order, and Mr. Mnangagwa is supposed to be another number, which is not where it is right now. So reading of the ballot is not just a political uh, problem, it's also a legal problem, which we obviously are also going to take up and complain about. 
we've also discovered that uh, there has been massive intimidation in the countryside, you know, especially in the context of uh, ZANU-PF panicking. It's clear that we have, uh, we have the majority of support in the rural areas. We have done a fantastic job in Matebeland, in Mashonaland, uh, in Masingo, in Manikaland. I can assure you that uh, the support we now have in those uh, areas is massive. This is why, a case in point, just last night, you know, people in Buhera uh, and uh, the ZANU PF MP Chikomba, the people were being told that uh, if you vote for MDC, uh, you are going to see what happened in 2008. And we are getting these, uh, you know, manifest and ubiquitous, ever present. Uh, circumstances of uh, intimidation across the whole country. And we're extremely worried, particularly in the Gope areas, uh, where people are being congregated, frog marched into meetings, almost having meetings, Pungwe meetings, uh, and we have evidence, we're compiling that evidence, we're going to give it to our observers, but we're also going to take up the matter with ZEC, we're also going to take up the matter with zanu uh, This information is clearly uh, indicating the violation of the Electoral Act Section 133, which speaks to issues of intimidation. Uh, it's very clear that they are intimidating um, uh, uh, supporters and villagers. We also note circumstances of vote buying, uh, especially the distribution of maize seed and fertilizer in June, uh, which is so unprecedented in July. Why? Because zanu -PF has now resorted to very desperate measures uh, to try and uh, prop up their fortunes, which are not redeemable even if they continue and try to do that. Section 136 of the Electoral Act is very clear on circumstances of what is defined as bribery. It is bribery to try and give somebody uh, something, hoping that uh, they will then uh, be confused in terms of their voting. In fact, if I may just read, you know, bribery speaks to doing anything, directly or indirectly, that gives, lends, procures, or uh, offers a promise to procure an in, or endeavor to procure any man for any person on behalf of a voter, like what we are seeing. Yes, it's good to distribute farm input, but let us do them outside the realm of elections. We have two weeks before an election, and we have ZANU PF beginning to do what they are doing. It's an extreme issue that we would want to be dealt with. Now, what is the way forward under this circumstance? I have already told the nation that uh, we are taking seriously. We had issues that we have not agreed upon with ZEC. We had raised 10 issues, which were our demands for a free and fair election. We scaled down to say we now have two minimum flashpoints or red lines, which is the issue of the ballot paper and the issue of the voter straw. These are so crucial, these are so important that we can't even negotiate anything. Yes, Chigumbo was saying, as far as they are concerned, it's water under the bridge. Now, there's neither water nor any bridge, as far as we are concerned. She is mistaken uh, if she thinks that this issue is going to be a sleeping dog. In fact, these dogs are going to bark. Not only bark, they are going to bite very soon. Because we want a free and fair election, we will not take anything lying. We will not accept a ballot paper that is not to our satisfaction. If we are to agree to having an election, we must have it under circumstances where the ballot paper is agreed upon printed according to the law. Now she has continued this very uh, banal and nebulous foggy line that uh, uh, you know, candidates is not covered by the law and stuff like that. You go to the Constitution of Zimbabwe, section 155, subsection 2C. It's very clear to say it shall be the role of the state and the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission to take all appropriate measures, including legislative measures, and to ensure that certain of the principles set out in subsection 1 are actually adhered to. Now, those speak to issues of uh, security, verifiability, accuracy, simplicity, and accountability and transparency of the voter uh, information and voter straw. Now, C, it must be the role of ZEC to ensure that all political parties and candidates, and I'm a candidate, a presidential candidate, one of the 23, Contesting in an election or participating in a referendum have reasonable access, reasonable, underline the word reasonable, access to all material, and I'm sure ballot papers are material, sensitive materials like ink, 
are all part of the material and information necessary for them to participate effectively. Now, if I don't have access to processes on the ballot paper printing, I have been denied my constitutional right. And I'm saying that on the basis of this, it must actually be availed to me when I say I want to see the ballot paper, when I say I want to have access to where the ballot paper is. It's security, it's storage, it's distribution. They are all issues that are covered in terms of the law. And that must be respected. So, yes, we have hit a stalemate. I've already sent a signal to SADC. I've sent a signal to the AU. I'm now taking three steps that are supposed to resolve these issues. The first one, in the interest of dialogue, I've uh, sent and dispatched the team to request an extraordinary meeting, which I have always requested and has not been acceded to, with the ZEC chairperson as a candidate on behalf of the alliance, on behalf of the candidates who have also registered as parliamentary candidates, 210 as um, um, uh, council candidates, over 1,900. Uh, those I represent in terms of requiring certain information on the voting process. So yes, this has been done. If then Chikumba fails to accept for us to meet, we are requesting an agent meeting with all the commissioners so that we articulate our issues and we also agree on a way forward. If this fails, we are also pushing for all the parties, and we have already requested to have a meeting of all parties, all candidates that are willing to be part of this journey, to also come together in terms of dealing with the issues that are supposed to be dealt with in the context of uh, the multi-party liaison uh, um, platform in terms of Section 160, I think it's 160D, of uh, the Electoral Act. We are also escalating this matter to SADAC. In fact, we are writing to SADAC to request an extraordinary summit uh, of SADAC to then deal with this stalemate and this dispute. Because as far as we are concerned, this is a dispute. We have a dispute, we have a stalemate, we have a crisis. We cannot possibly have an election if we do not know where the ballot paper is, where is printed the ballot paper, the quality of the ballot paper. In fact, as I have already indicated in other uh, in spheres and spaces, I have no evidence that the ballot paper was printed in Zimbabwe. I wish I had any, but I have no evidence that the ballot paper was actually printed in Zimbabwe. And that makes it a very serious issue. So our leaders are going to be engaging on this three-tier approach to deal with these issues. We are also already mobilizing people and uh, engaging them. We will meet all structures, we will meet the church, <coughs> civic organizations, the trade unions, uh, war veterans, across the whole country to hear what they say about the way forward in terms of dealing with this issue. We also are going to engage zanu -Pierre because if they are genuine, there they are also an equal player. They must have the same concerns because I'm sure they have not seen the ballot. Unless if they are being represented by ZEC, then perhaps they don't need to complain the way we are complaining. So these are the issues, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm ready and willing to take any clarifications. But the good news is that uh, we are ready for the big mantle, we are ready for victory. There is no way ED is going to defeat us in this election. There is no way zanu -PF is going to win this election. In fact, it's no longer about uh, parties anymore in the countryside. People are clear that this is no longer about the MDC or zanu -PF. It's now about Zimbabwe. And when we vote for Zimbabwe, we vote for a fresh start, we vote for new policies, we vote for a new face. And I'm sure I represent that new face in adequacy and in a convincing um, a dose um, of, uh, of clarity. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions on the issues that I've raised? Uh, how long have you given this process to take? It's two weeks away from an election. Is it 24 hours? Is it three weeks? What if nobody moves? Precisely. Well, we are, we are utilizing this whole week for that process, uh, hoping that uh, uh, there's going to be an understanding, particularly on the issue of the ballot paper. If this issue has not been resolved, I, I say it. We, we will not boycott an election because we are the election. We will not boycott the election because we are the winners. Winners don't quit. Winners don't boycott. It is zanu -PF that might boycott an election, but not us, because we are the winners. What we are going to do is that we are going to use our constitutional rights to make sure that any process that is perforated, any process that is uh, uh, negated in terms of the law, in terms of the constitution, does not then uh, take place and does not then kick in. We have the power to do that and we will do it.
Yes. Okay. Um, on some of the processes that you are mentioning, don't you think that the horse is already bolted out of the stable? Um, and now probably it's time for the opposition to concentrate on educating the voters on um, probably the voter, the, 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 on the ballot paper. Where are you found and some of the processes when they go to cast their ballot? We know what we are talking about. The horse is not bolted. We want an authentic ballot. You know, let me just hasten to say this to Zimbabwe and those who care to listen. You may want to rush to go to an election before we have dealt with the issue of the ballot. It will not be an election. It will be something else, not an election. We don't want to go into a fiction or a movie, a predetermined movie disguised as an election. It's a betrayal of those who have died for one man, one vote in the liberation struggle and also post-liberation. So we will not be stampeded into an election which is not an election. We will not be frog-marched into going into some kind of a fuss or a sham of uh, an election. We want a proper election. You know? And of course, you would want us to say, ah, no, we are educated. We don't want to educate our people on fiction and deception. There's no reason for us to do that. We'll be cheating our own people whom we lead. This is not a Chamisa Chigumba issue. This is not a, a, an MDC Alliance Zek issue. It's a people issue. A people versus Zek issue. So forget about it. We will not be hurried into anything. They may think that they can rush into having 30 July. 30 July is just an event a day. This process is about the people of Zimbabwe. The young people of Zimbabwe who want to have an election that will produce a legitimate outcome, an acceptable outcome, a credible outcome. <coughs> No, thank you. Let's say, let's say by the end of the week that you have given um, the architecture for <coughs> what you call a pass <coughs> continue to exist and Zek is not moved in. What happens now? We'll, we'll then untangle and disentangle the fast. How? Do you want to elaborate on that? We'll reverse the frontiers of the fast. You see. Your, your supporters <coughs> might want to understand... The they exactly. understand we're engaging them. They know. They are very clear about where we are going. I tell you, this is across the political divide, including those in Zanopia. They also want a free <coughs> fair election. It's a national call. It's not a partisan call. So don't worry. You will see when you engage the people and when you say, this is the direction we are taking, once we have finished the consultation. So the how part is going to be answered. The proof of the eating is in the pudding. Don't rush into everything. You must chew one thing at a time. Don't bite too much. Yeah. At the moment, the focus is on making sure that we pursue dialogue. But if the dialogue route is blocked, we have no other option except to then unleash our instruments of peace. Our instruments of peace. Thank you. Um, I understand is on record saying that um, the ballot papers are in a bunker below Fidelity printers somewhere. And they're also record saying um, political parties were there and they were given um, the ballot papers like a one to see if uh, the eggs would move or whatever. So by terms of evidence of if they were printed in Zimbabwe, what really kind of evidence do you want? Do you want to be taken to the bunker or what? My dear, I, I hate to say that a judge of the High Court is, 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 is missing the truth. I think she's being missed by the truth. But, uh, but, but I can tell you that uh, we are the political players. We did not see any ballot. We were not shown any ballot. We were not part of any ballot that was shown to us. This whole thing about the banker you're talking about, we don't know whether it is a military banker or a civilian banker. And we are not interested in that. What we want to know is to know the security of our ballot, the one that we are going to use. That has not been availed. And that we are seeing needs to be available to us. So it doesn't matter if Chigumba chooses to shout on top of your voice or arrogantly say that uh, there has to be an earthquake, it's water under the bridge, whatever she says. The bottom line is that it takes two to tango. Unfortunately, she wants to tango alone and will not allow her to tango alone. Yes? Um, Peter? Are you suggesting that if you don't make progress on would find a way of halting or delaying or stopping stopping the election. Of Is that course. what you're saying? Of course. Uh, what 
mechanism, O oh Lord, would you use to you, do that? We will show you everything will be done according to the law. And we have everything done according to the law. Just wait for the moment. It will come. But as far as I could read in the law, sure. the only way of delaying election is if one of the presidential candidates was to die. No, we are not going to kill any of the presidential candidates. <laughs> we are not going to kill any, but I can assure you that uh, we, are, we don't seek to delay the election. We, we are simply saying that there will be no election on the 30th of July without a proper ballot. I, and I can see the, your anxiety around the how. I have already answered that one. Yes? Um, some Zimbabweans are saying that uh, they are concerned uh, with your uh, comments and sentiments over the past few weeks, and uh, there seem to be threats of violence. Can you clarify what really do you need to do as MDC? Is, are you going to be violent to make sure that uh, the elections are, are maybe uh, set aside? I don't understand which comment <laughs> in particular. I'm a very thorough politician. The issue of untangling and the the, the, the trace that uh, something is... Uh, so when, I need, when, when you untangle a fuss, does it mean that you are being violent? So we that's are the I think even my colleagues were asking as well, what is it that you want to do? Because your sentiments seem but, to... But, but, to but I I'm sure you know, you know that there's what is called strategy and tactic. If I come here and I start uh, giving people about my next course of action, what am I doing? And that's what you want me to do. It doesn't work that way. I can't go and whisper uh, in the ear of uh, my competitor or opposition what my next strategy is. This is to be a strategy. <coughs> I've always said transparent does not mean negative. And please don't ask me to be negative. Yes. Yes. Uh, just to uh, the last week, I was talking about dumping the indelible ink in the box. Some um, what you call their ink pens. I, I don't know if the players are you aware of such things. We are not aware. One of the biggest challenges we have had with the Chigumba, and like during Makarao's time, is that Chigumba is very arrogant. Chigumba seems to think that she's the author of uh, uh, law and the, the the alpha and omega of wisdom and the knowledge of, of, of uh, what has to be done. She's not. She must listen. And she must know that she's being paid by the taxpayers. Myself included. Yourself included. All of us included. She must do things in a manner that satisfies the minimum demand. Not to come and to be arrogant. Arrogance usually walks hand in hand with ignorance. And we don't want it to be one of those unfortunate circumstances in the history of our country. I'm about to conclude now. Three more. One, two, uh, three. I've seen some. We want to have uh, a second bite. Yes. That, yeah, but let us have others. The last one at the back. In that order, sir. Okay. okay. Oh, but you already asked another okay. yes? Thank you. Um, I wanted clarification on uh, some threats from uh, one amused beauty uh, when he alluded to the fact that you would mobilize dis to disrupt elections in all 10,000 voting centers. That is if your demands are not met. Is that not a threat of violence? Uh, Mr. Beat is a doubt. He has never been violent in his life. And we are a team of uh, peace loving people. You know, we, we are not newcomers to this uh, struggle. We have been in this struggle for 18 years. We have been provoked. We have been harassed, persecuted. But we have never resorted to violence. Be not because we do not have the capacity. We have so much capacity. But we don't want to because we don't believe in violence. We believe in peace. You know that those who control the instrument of violence are in the state. And you know that our biggest problem in this country has not been... Uh, just violence from civilians, but violence from the state. You are aware of that. So Mr. Bitti was simply saying that we will demonstrate within the confines of the law. He's a lawyer, a peace-loving lawyer for that matter. We have our own platforms and we're going to utilize them for purposes of making sure that there is a peace and amity, harmony in this country. Why would you want to 
destroy the country we are supposed to be leading. We are the next government. In two weeks' time, we will be the next government. That I can assure you. We will be the next government. That, so we, are, we have more responsibility than Mr. Mnangagwa. That's why Mr. Mnangagwa is so reckless. Because he's the leader of the opposition. He doesn't care about this country. We care about this country because we are the incoming government. He's so careless and reckless because he's the outgoing government. That's the difference. So we know the burden of caution is higher on our shoulders than on that other side. Because they are on the leeward side. High level um, people like uh, Kofi Annan, Philip Johnson are going to be coming um, to maybe shepherd this uh, election. Um, your feeling <coughs> is a step uh, in Zimbabwe. Yes, I'm meeting with uh, with uh, uh, former Secretary General Annan on Friday. Uh, we, we, we are going to raise these issues. Hopefully, we will still be able to raise them. Because uh, if, if, if if there is no understanding on the part of Zek, uh, we should be focusing on Sadak really coming in to adjudicate on this matter. And that's what we are pushing for. We have a disagreement with Zek, we have a disagreement with ZANU PF, we have a disagreement with ED Munangagwa on the election. This is a disputed process. Now, when you dispute in a process, why should you even go to an election where the process is disputed? You are simply wasting people's time. And our people are listening. Our people know. People will never be demobilized. Don't even worry about that. They are very clear. They are raring to go. The momentum is huge. And we are going to defeat ZANU PF. Mr. Chiwenga knows that. Mr. Mnangagwa knows that. Of course, I've been having problems of late to say, who am I really running against? You know, uh, between Chiwenga and Mnangagwa. But I will defeat them both. In fact, it's been merrier in that, in that fashion. So don't worry about uh, you know uh, the imminent uh, personalities. They are coming. We will obviously engage them on the issues going forward. But we will not be frog marched into a fuss. That's what they did to my predecessor. Once beaten, twice shot. I will not repeat the mistakes of yesterday. We are in a hurry to resolve our problems, but we are not in a hurry to get any power, because for us the objective is not power. The objective is not just to be in government. The objective is to bring real change to the people of Zimbabwe. And we are that change. We are that people Zimbabweans have been waiting for. And we are ready to deliver it. Last, at the back, very back, the one I already identified. Okay, I, I wanted to Oh, say, yes. Yes, yes. Okay. I, I wanted to say, as we go into elections, of course you have mentioned the challenges or the grievances we have with the SEC. What are, the, are then the problems within the room, within the MDC arena? Any grievances within the room? Ah, uh, well, look, we are now talking politics. I don't know if there are people with grievances. Uh, that's another thing. They know the platforms to follow. I'm their leader, so if there's any grievance, they must come to uh, the leader. And I provide leadership. Then we'll move. That are you strong now or weaker as you go into election? My brother, just wait for the election. We've grown stronger. In fact, the MDC is now bigger and stronger than it has ever been. You know, in 99, we're not this pop. You know, we, we are begging the fold with all our cylinders fired. We are a juggernaut. An unstoppable juggernaut. San PF is our meal for this election, I can assure you. <laughs> okay, Peter, the very last one. You know, I, 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 I respect female journalists, and for that reason, that's my own so Thank you very um, much. I wondered if you had seen the alleged Baba Zukra last night um, claiming that uh, perhaps uh, Judge Chigumba was um, doing what she does at Zek because she's having an affair with the cabinet minister. I wondered if you saw that tweet last night. Well, <laughs> well those are, I think those are personal matters. But certainly what is causing people to begin to be anxious about uh, certain things is the conduct of certain of the Z commissioners. You know, the omissions and commissions are, are likely to be fatal ground for conjecture, uh, guesswork, and conspiracy. Because people don't understand why certain things are being done. Their hatred of uh, accountability is baffling. 
Their penchant for opaqueness is legendary and encyclopedic. I don't understand why they are so determined to run away from the people, to run away from the truth, to run away from the dictates of honesty. It's so shocking. Very, very shocking. So those issues obviously are likely to come up. I, I don't encourage them, uh, but, but they are likely to come up because everyone is seeing the obvious evidence of manipulation and corruption of the electoral system. Just look at the poster ballots and how they were, they were done. Scandalous. Look at how the numbers of people have been dished out to Zanfir. Pay what? Scandalous. Econ, it can't be culpable. It is Z. Because Econ does not know a word. It's only Z that would know. So you can see that there is twin, you know, working together between Zanfir and Z. And it's not even everyone in Zanu, it's a few people. The rest are saints. You know, they are just being courted into a particular life. They also want change. They are sick and tired. Well, they are not part of the feeding trough. Thank you. God bless you. We love you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you very much.